Welcome to Friday Fire with Dr. Keisha B. Spivey, where you discover how to live life on max in Jesus. In your Bibles with me to Matthew 4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be reading from Matthew 4, just a couple verses full of meat. But verses 18 through 20. And while you're turning, I just want to acknowledge my family and that who had an opportunity to stand earlier. It's so awesome to have you here. I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you so much. When you get there, say amen or say hold up, wait a minute, whatever you need. And we can stand and, and read this word. I know it's tight, but you know, we didn't come here to be comfortable. We came here to, to hear what God had to say. We didn't come here for church as usual. You could have said home. But you came here because you know there's an anointing when people who believe come together. Praises go up. Blessings start to fall down. And those things that's been bombarding your mind all of a sudden seem so futile in the hands of our big God. So you've come here today to get what God has for you. I'm reading at verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to stand here and declare your word. I declare Keisha be fully decreased, and you be 100% increased. Don't allow one word to come out of my mouth that's not of you. I declare that the minds of the people are open, their hearts are open, their eyes are open, their ears are open to not hear me, but to hear what you have to say, God. I declare that that thing that may have brought him today, brought them here today, that they will receive revelation. They'll receive power and strength to run on in you and be all you've called and created them to be. We thank you in advance. We give you the glory and the praise for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You can have a seat. Hallelujah. As we're reading these scriptures, Peter and Andrew were fishermen. This is pretty clear. And anyone who's ever been fishing knows a little something about the ins and outs of the process. Any fishermen in here? Anybody ever been fishing? I ain't say you caught anything. I just say you ever went. You kind of know what to do, the pole, the hook. The, the, y'all understand? Y'all can talk back to me. Not your head. Let me know you're out there. And if you are a fisherman, I bet you, you know where to go to catch the big ones. You know where they're, they're biting. You know where to go at the pond under the shade tree. You know how to scope out your spot, right? You know how to do it. You also realize if you go someplace and you're going fishing and you drive up on the property and there's a sign that says private property, no fishing allowed, you automatically know there's some danger if you proceed on that property, right? Possibly you can get fined, because they can call the law, or they make it to shooting. I I grew up in Nash County. I don't know about y'all dignified folks, but you go on the wrong person's property, there might be a few shots or rounds fired up. Anybody anybody willing to admit? You know, somebody might get to shooting. I've been with my dad a time or two, and we heard shots. I thought, ooh, we need to get off of this. He said, hey, home, let's go. So that meant we were someplace we, we didn't have any business being. But Andrew and Peter were fishermen, so they would understand the ins and outs of fishing. They could relate. So I want us to look back at these scriptures here. Jesus said to them to follow him and to become fishers of men. He wanted them to join his team and help him spread some good news. He wanted some help because what he knew and what he had tasted and what he understood was far too great to keep to himself. He needed some people to go help him fish out some men. That makes sense? Y'all following me? He wanted him to join, wanted them to help him spread this good news. And some of you might be asking, well, what is this good news? You ask? I'm so glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. This good news is if you got on God's team and you became his private property, Adam's sin separated God and man, but God sent Jesus to reset the plan. Y'all catch that? It was Adam's sin that separated God and who? Okay, God sent Jesus to reset the what? Exactly. Y'all with me here. And when you say yes to Christ, when you say yes, you want to be on his team, that means the, oh, you have passed away. Anybody excited by that old stuff? 
the places you used to go, the things you used to do, the people you used to hang out with, you know, that's not even you anymore. You become a new creature. All that old stuff has passed away. And when you get on God's team, you get on a team that's got some good benefits. This is the good news. This is why Andrew and they were willing to drop their nets, drop what their, their lifestyle, drop what they knew. Because they understood this thing that he was spreading was some mighty, mighty, mighty good news. So when you start looking at the good news and these benefits that come from being on Christ's team, you have to ask yourself, okay, what's the benefit? Well, for me, one of the first benefits were all my sins were forgiven. Anybody willing to admit, I know we in church and y'all looking all cute today, but anybody willing to admit you had some junk in your trunk, dipping and diving, slipping and sliding, being some places, doing some things you shouldn't have been doing. And when you came to Christ, you recognized... Maybe that won't the way. Some of you got caught up in some stuff. And you realize maybe that wasn't the way. But when you come to him and you realize when I say yes to him, all of that is no longer mine. That's good news to me. That's good news to someone who realized they had messed up more than their share of things. Made some bad decisions. But to know I could step out of that into what he had for me and I didn't have to bring that with me was good news. Where I came from, what I've been through, what I done been into, no longer had to bound me to where I was. I could step out of that junk and go higher. I could step away from that and leave it behind. Now, family and friends might remind you, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. I want you to turn in your word to Ephesians 1-7. And I know some of you said, she said, turn again. Y'all know y'all ain't opened up your Bible since last Sunday, so it shouldn't hurt you to turn, to, turn with me to Ephesians 1-7. It's back behind Galatians. Keep on back, back in the New Testament. Turn with me to 1 7. Because here's the thing I don't want you to take what I'm saying. Don't believe me. Let's look into what the Word of God says. Let's look into the scriptures. When we look at Ephesians 1 7, it says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the richness of His grace. Last time I read that verse, my name won't nowhere in there. It won't even about me. Y'all, somebody ought to catch that. It won't about my track record. It won't about my goodness. It wasn't about my righteousness. It wasn't about my making right decisions. It was about his sacrifice, his blood, came my redemption. That's mighty good news. I can step right up out of that and into what he had already done. I wasn't even anywhere in that my mess wasn't but what's powerful is I wasn't in it but it was still all about me my name wasn't written in there but it was for me your name may not be written in there but it's for you too you think about the Bible you know Sunday school we we talk about the woman called an adultery that's pretty familiar remember when they brought her before Jesus and he was writing in this writing down on the ground writing in the stone and he looked at her and said your sins are forgiven Go and sin no more. Remember when the guy who was the paralytic that they put through the roof, he was determined he wasn't going to leave lest he could walk up out of that place. The first thing Jesus said to him was, your sins are forgiven. Now get up and walk. Okay, let's back this up a minute. Remember when you were sleeping around. Can I talk like that? Y'all got, oh. That means your sins are forgiven. Remember when you drank like a sailor? Some of you still sipping. That means forgiven for that too. So you're, you got to start looking in these scriptures and start reading about people and start reading about you. You got to start seeing you in these verses. You got to recognize this wasn't written for them. This was written for me. This is my blueprint for how I'm supposed to make it around here. This is how when I jack something up and I don't know what to do, I don't have to get on the phone. I can go to the throne and I can just start looking through these pages and I can see what I'm supposed to do. What did God say about me? Not what did she say. Not what they What does God say about the woman I'm called to be? Who did he say? Whose image am I created in? Sometimes you got to get your reminder. This is a good news benefit. When you accept Christ, you're now able to look to and stand behind the cross. They want to throw darts at you. I don't have to move. The cross shields me. 
You can run that across the plate. You can tell me how am I going to stand here. Some I'm looking at some familiar faces and knew me way back. I'm like, mm -hmm. You can say what you want to say. Think what you want to think about Keisha, but I'm behind the cross. There is no perfection in Keisha. There is no holiness in Keisha. There is no rightness in Keisha. But when I stand behind the cross, I am right. I am holy. I am pure. I am blameless. So take your best shot. Because it's not about me. It's about the cross. It's about the cross and the blood that covers the cross that covered me. So you can get on the phone and go call folks and say, you know whose daughter I heard preach? Do you know? And I smile. Because I say, you looking at the wrong person. You see Keisha, you need to see the Jesus on Keisha. When you think about how awesome this thing is. I know it's family and friends there, and you might be sitting next to somebody you mad at right now who you think need to forgive you. But when we think about this forgiveness, that's not conditional, that's not contingent, that's not circumstantial. Come on now, you know people will forgive you, but. I for Come on now, anybody got any butt people in your life? Some big old butts? I'll forgive you, but. Tell them, I'm on your street. Even if they don't say it, they thinking it. This time, but. I forgave you the last time, but. Come on now. Aren't y'all glad we don't serve a but God? Don't you? You're glad that you can just say, God, forgive me. And he says, forgiven. Oh, you ain't got to beg and plead. You ain't got to make excuses, justifications. You ain't got to lie. It is what it is, Lord. I can't unscramble them eggs, but can we make a new batch? You know, I can't undo what I did, but Lord. And he says, forgiven. That's one of those good news benefits. When you realize that God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. He sent it for you to take all the sins of mankind, past, present, and future, to the cross for you. He did a great exchange. He took everything that he was not. He had no sin, knew no sin, and he took all of our sin. He became sin so that we could be forgiven. He became poverty so that we could be wealthy. He became defeat so we could stand here victorious. He became the scum of the earth so I could stand here as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you could sit there as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That should stir up some gratefulness. That should stir up some God I thank you. God I love you. I want to lay down my life for you. I want to serve you. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin left the crimson stain, but he washed it white as Hello. He washed it. That's a good news benefit. To know he calls you forgiven. He calls you redeemed. He calls you his own. He calls you beloved. You are the beloved one yes, sir. Yes, sir. because you're his private property yes, forgiveness is a good benefit but you got some family and friends who might forgive you but God is so awesome he takes it further he not only forgives but he forgets I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson join us next week same place same time and until then May the fire on your altar never burn out.